Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Jin Su Hong, a research associate for South Dakota State University. So, Jin Su, before we start, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Uh, hi, Clayton. Thanks for having me. This really great opportunity to share our research program from SDSU. And uh, again, my I'm Jin Su Hong, uh, working as a research associate in the Animal Science Department at SDSU. And I'm originally from South Korea. I got my PhD degree in Swine Nutrition at Seoul National University in South Korea. And si- since 2018, I start, uh, started a postdoctoral research program in here at SDSU. And since 2021, I'm, wor- I'm doing a swine research as a researcher associated with the swine faculty and graduate student. And also I'm working on developing the poultry nutrition research program in SDSU with broilers and turkeys. Awesome. So I read that study you sent us about feeding uh, DDGs to pigs in the growth finish period and balancing the amino acids with extra soybean meal to get a better branch chain amino acid ratio due to the lu- extra leucine. So would you mind telling us a little bit about that study? Yeah, so my major research interest in focusing on improving the utilization of the biofuel byproduct in swine diet because the, some of the uh, biofuel byproducts such as the soy meal, corn DDGs, or canola meal, or some other carinata meal uh, are considered as a really good protein source and cost-effective ingredients for swine diets, but they have some anti-nutritional factors limited to include the high level of those ingredients in swine diet. So I have done with some research project to improve improve the nutritional value of those ingredients by alleviating the detrimental effect of the anti-nutritional factors present in those ingredients. And in corn DDGs, corn DDGs has some high fiber content compared to the soybean meal. And when we, and also when we fed the high level of the corn DDGs in swine diet, uh, it caused the uh, uh, excessive exceed dietary leucine level uh, to the pigs, which caused the imbalance of the amino acid in pig body and which caused the uh, decrease the decreased amino acid utilization in pig body and cause some other feed intake problem. So we we have completed the swine research funded by National Pork Board uh, with the Dr. Ryan Samuel, who is the assistant professor and swine extension swine extension in SDSU and Dr. Paul Klein and Dr. David Kleider from Christensen Farm together to evaluate the effect of the uh, different uh, SID brain chain amino acid to lysine ratio in growth finishing diets on the gross performance or carcass trade and economic analysis of growing finishing pigs fed the high inclusion level of the corn digest diet. So with the diets you fed, um, it looked like you fed um, excess soybean meal either in the grove grower, either in the finisher or both. Um, did that excess soybean meal do better in one treatment over the other? Uh, so we we had five different treatments. So first treatment was just a corn soybean meal based diet uh, based on the PIC nutrient recommendation. And then the negative control diet with the corn soybean uh, with corn DDGs was corn soybean meal with corn DDGs at thirty percent for the growing phase and then twenty percent for the finishing phase, and the other three uh, corn DDGs diet were formulated with the dif- uh, different uh, brain chain amino acid to lysine ratio for the growing phase requirement or finishing phase requirement or growing to finishing phase requirements during the whole feeding grow finishing period. So uh, 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 when we formulate the diet, we met 
we make the diet with the same net energy level and then same crude protein and lysine, methionine, threonine, tryptophan level, which, which are the major limiting amino acid in swine diet. And also, we when we adjust the branch chain amino acid to lysine ratio in those dietary treatment, we only adjust the soybean milk inclusion level, not using the synthetic branch chain amino acid. So we only the, uh among the dietary treatment, we there are few difference in the soybean milk inclusion level and corn oil inclusion level. Just uh for the soybean milk is between range between two to four a uh, four to six percent of inclusion level difference and for the corn oil like half percent or less than one percent of corn oil inclusion level difference were there. So based on those um and with the different branch chain amino acid levels with the you know the leucine, valine, isoleucine, um and you get that that shared transporter um, with them. And so the extra soybean meal, like you said, can kind of like help balance those out. Um, did one of those do particularly better or did that overall, did all three of those tend to do better and pr- improving performance or um, economic profitability? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, we set up the optimal requirements of the branch chain amino acid to lysine ratio for the growing phase and finishing phase based on the publication that de- public publicated data and then our preliminary data for the corn disease study and brain chain amino acid to lysine ratio studies in swine so for the uh, optimal requirement of the brain chain amino acid to lysine ratio during the growing phase uh, we set up the SID value to lysine ratio was 68 percent and isoleucine to lysine ratio was 60 and leucine to lysine ratio was 140 to 150 percent and for the finishing phase requirements the value to lysine ratio was 78 percent and isoleucine to lysine ratio was 70 percent and leucine to lysine ratio was set up uh, between 150 to 170 percent so uh, in this research project, we found that uh, feeding the corn digits diet with the SID branch chain amino acid to lysine ratio for the finishing phase requirements during the whole feeding period have the greater uh, gross performance of the pigs compared to the other corn digits diet. And also this, uh, the pig fed the uh, finishing phase requirements of the SID branch chain amino acid to lysine ratio uh, shows the similar gross performance with, uh, com- similar gross performance with the pigs fed of just corn soy based diet. And when we analyzed the carcass data, dietary treatment didn't affect the uh, hot carcass weight, but feeding the corn digits with the branch chain amino acid to lysine ratio for the finishing phase requirement during the whole period increased the iodine value of the pork belly, but which is just in the acceptable range of the pork processing. And also, also they show the decrease the carcass yield, but we speculate that the, the diet formulated with the uh, finishing phase requirement of branch and amino acid to lysine ratio was having had more, little bit more corn oil inclusion level compared to the other corn digest diet. So yeah, the carcass weight and carcass yield and brook belly iodine value results were there. And in the economic analysis, feeding the pigs with the SID branch and amino acid to lysine ratio for the finishing phase requirement during the whole period showed the show the greater benefits for the swine producer when they using the high inclusion level of corn DDGs. So uh feeding the pigs with the finishing phase requirement of branch chain amino acid to lysine ratio in high corn dish diet show the higher net income over the feed and facility cost 
uh, compared to the feeding the corn soy diet or feeding the other quantities diet by one to five dollars per head. Yeah, so we we measure the so through this research project we conclude that feeding the corn disease diet with the SID brain chain amino acid utilizing ratio for the finishing phase requirement during the whole feeding period only adjust by the soybean meat and closure level uh, would have the greater benefits for the swine producer with regard to the improved gross performance and improved the economic benefits. So on the economics, you said it improved performance or improved economic performance by $1 to $5 a head. Um, but obviously those numbers can change with uh, the different costs of soybean meal and stuff. So, um, so how, what was your cost for soybean meal or what uh, market levels were you doing when the study was performed? So we used the market cost of the corn, soybean meal and corn digits based uh, from the December 2021. So the corn price was the 10 cents per pound and corn digits was 8 cents per pound and soybean meal was 16 cents per pound. So when we formulate the diet with 30% of digits for growing phase and 20% corn digits for the finishing phase, we can get one to five dollars extra benefits by using those corn disease diet with the S uh, branch chain amino acid to lysine ratio for the finishing phase requirement during the whole period. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show and uh, sharing the results of the study with us. And to everyone else listening, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this episode and we are constantly on the lookout for the latest updates in swine nutrition. And if you have a swine nutrition related research trial that you would be able to share on our podcast, please send an email to nutritionblackbelt at swineit.com and we would love to talk about your research. See you later.